Hello, this is Danny Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide. 3.23 3.23 with persistent and instance hangers and freight elevators holds the promise to change a lot of how cargo is handled in the game. But there appears to be one exception, and that is the hull C, which is incapable of landing at hangers, so how will any of this work with the hull C? Now recently, I have been doing all of my heavy cargo flying in the Hercules, so I have a good baseline of experience to compare how things would work in 3.23, but I really hadn't done much with the Hull C since it had been launched. So I did a few days of attempting to do cargo in the Hull C to get a current baseline. And here is what I found. Overall, the Hull C is viable but problematic. There are situations which will cause a complete loss in the Hull C that would not cause a complete loss in, say, the Hercules. In addition, there are frustrating quirks, some frequent, some occasional, that you will need to work around. I will go over those that I encountered and how I worked around them. Then at the end, I will talk about how the whole concept of hangars and freight elevators needs to be applied to the Hull C, although it is not on the roadmap for 3.23 and thus is not going to happen anytime soon. In general, though, I made more money per hour with the C2 Hercules, but that is not a fair comparison. I had sufficient seed money to fill the Herc with the most valuable of cargoes, but not enough to fill the hull with the most valuable of cargoes. So I was running much cheaper cargoes, and thus not an apples-to-apples comparison. So for those of you unfamiliar with the current process of hauling with the hull C, starting with waking up and your ship empty in storage, 1. Bring the ship out of storage, preferably to a hangar, 2. Go to the admin office and buy the cargo. 3. Return to the ship and depart. 4. Be assigned a cargo loading area. 5. Expand the cargo spindles. 6. Fly to the glowing square. 7. Stop completely inside of it. 8. Wait until it completely finished loading. 9. Fly to the destination station. 10. Dock at the station. Some will prefer the tactic of stopping near one of the landing pads and going EVA. Number 11. Travel to the admin office and sell the cargo. 12. Back to the ship. 13. Request undocking and get clearance for space from cargo services. 14. Fly to the glowing cube. 15. Wait for unloading. 16. Retract the spindles. 17. Dock against the spaceport. And 18. Log out or go to the admin office to begin the cycle all over again. Now, if your immediate thought is that 18 is way too many to join the club, nobody is going to disagree with that. But sometimes not every one of those 18 steps goes smoothly. In step one, I often observe that even if the hull seat was empty and retracted, it will still be retrieved to a docking port and that the docking port door will be unopenable. My workaround was to first retrieve any other ship to a hangar. Then when you retrieve the hull C, when you already have some other ship in a hangar, it will retrieve the hull C to a hangar. Step two, pretty much every time I bought cargo, the cargo terminal hung before giving confirmation of the purchase. This was unnerving, but usually if I stepped back and then opened the other cargo terminal, the cargo would be confirmed as bought and awaiting loading. Step three, usually happened without problems. Step four, sometimes happened automatically, but often had a long wait time and it took multiple hailing of cargo services before they would respond. Sometimes the only workaround was to request dock, dock, and then depart dock again. Step five, sometimes there would be a graphics glitch that only outer parts of the spindles were visible. This turned out to be a graphics glitch and the ship still behaved as if all the cargo was really there. Step six usually went without trouble, although you have to mind how wide ass your ship is with those spindles extended. Step seven, it helped to set your speed limit to zero and then lock pitch and yaw control. Steps eight and nine usually went without trouble. Step 10 could be tricky in low light situations, particularly knowing what the orientation of the landing bridge was with just a circle at the end. My suggestion would be if they put two rows of green lights on the top of the bridge and a single row of red lights on the bottom. That way you'd be able to determine which way is up. Step 11 could have the same problems as step 2. Step 12 usually had no troubles. Step 13 would again be a matter that sometimes I would get an immediate assignment to a cargo area without asking. Sometimes I would need to make multiple requests and waits. And sometimes I ran out of patience and requested redocking and started over. And then steps 14 through 18 would pretty much have the same problems as steps 6 through 10. Now, an additional problem with the hull C was less often it would have recovery. For example, just after docking when loaded, the server crashed. 
Now, in my Hercules, once I heard the message, landing complete, I would know that if the server crashed, I would return to my Hercules in storage at the station with the cargo intact. But when docked with a full cargo load in the hull, when I returned from the 30K, the ship was stored but devoid of cargo. Even if waiting overnight to be sure that the 30K crash recovery had time to process. So this represents an additional level of annoyance with the hull C. So that's my experience with the Hall C N 3.22. Viable, but problematic, with more than a few quirks to be worked around. So, there is nothing about this being changed in 3.23. But how should it be changed after 3.23? Obviously, the first priority has to be reducing the number of steps, but should also be a matter of conceptually conforming it to the way in which things are supposed to work for hangar-based craft in 3.23. The parallel to the 3.23 hangar for the hull series should be the space dock, which is the closest thing I can compare to it is the space dock from the first two Star Trek movies, except considerably less see-through and big enough for even the hull E. It is a tunnel with doors on both ends and the standard docking concourse in the middle. The same wall as the docking tunnel also has two oversized freight elevators. If you want to do manual loading, you can go EVA and move containers in and out of the oversized freight elevators using hand and shoulder tractor beams. There are also two remote turrets available with SRV-sized tractor beams. These are what the dock workers are presumed to use if you pay for loading. In addition to the standard 1 through 32 SCU containers, there should be two additional container sizes for the hull C and larger. They are the 192 SCU containers and the 384 SCU containers. The external dimensions of the 192 SU containers would be 5 by 7.5 by 10 meters, and the external dimensions of the 384 SCU containers are 10 meters by 10 meters by 7.5 meters. Not only are these used for large volumes of goods, but could also be proxies for carrying small ships and vehicles, presuming a certain degree of disassembly and flat packing like IKEA furniture. So you could pull your Gladius or Nova to the space dock freight elevator, and what would arrive at the elevator would be a 384 SCU box with the item presumably disassembled behind the scenes. Similarly, an Ursa, for example, would arrive at a 192 SCU box with much less need for disassembly at all. At the destination, you can put the big container inside the space dock freight elevator at the destination, and presumably behind the scenes, the shipper vehicle would be reassembled and in your local inventory ready to go. So that's my experience with where the hull seat is and where I think it should go. I see a lot of promise in it. Do you? Now for an update on our giveaways, we continue to make progress toward our goal of giving away the Zippy Zazzy Zafdig Zephyr, Zaffir, the Zeus 2 cargo, as well as our larger goal of the magnificent multi-role mining meta, the Arasta. One entry per video, just be a member and be entered automatically, or subscribe and comment with the secret word. And the secret word for this video is completing my phrase that the hull C is viable but. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.